So let's look on the first chapter on cell versus battery. So an electrochemical cell is able to take electrical energy and turn it into chemical energy. As you are charging your battery, you are taking electrical energy and turning it into chemical energy and storing it in the battery. As you are discharging electrochemical cell, you're taking chemical energy from the battery and turn it into electrical energy that you can use. So that's an electrochemical cell. A battery consists of one or more electrochemical cells. So most of the times a battery is more cells combined uh, together into one physical unit, but a battery can be one or more electrochemical cells. Now this battery is described as having a nominal voltage a certain voltage which is just a term which is easy to use because a battery actually has different voltages during the charging and discharging cycle but in general you describe a battery as having a an average or a typical voltage um, so that's the nominal voltage of a battery and then you can take this one battery and combine it with many more batteries by connecting them in series or parallel so let's go to the whiteboard again and draw this up so that I can explain it even a bit better. So uh, we are going to build an electrochemical cell. So we start with a housing. Inside of this housing, inside of this vessel, we'll place an electrolyte. So an electrolyte is something which can conduct electricity and is necessary in order to create an electrochemical cell. In the electrolyte, we will place two materials, two different materials, which interact with each other in a chemical way through a redox reaction, whereby it can either way absorb or release electrons, which are the, the small particles that form electricity. So you have these two plates of opposite, opposite materials inside of the electrolyte, and then we want to be able to easily connect our wires, our positive and our negative, to this electrochemical cell. So we place the two main terminals outside of the housing. We connect these terminals to the two plates inside. And this will now allow us to create an, a circuit, an electrical circuit. And the electricity can flow through the circuit. And the two plates are either way absorbing or releasing electrons based on whether you are charging or discharging the electrochemical cell. Now, while it is great that we have made our own electrochemical cell, all right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. This cell will give us a voltage, but the amperage, so the, the amount of energy storage capacity of this cell is minimal and is normally not very useful. So then what we do is we want to increase the capacity, so, so the, the amp hours of the electrochemical cell, without changing the voltage. So we do that by taking a much larger vessel, a much larger container, also filling it with electrolyte, but now we take many of these uh, two different plates, the, these plates of different materials, and placing them all next to each other. And we want to, in this situation, we want to create a cell which has the same voltage, but a higher amperage, and therefore we want to connect the plates in parallel. Now as a bit of a, a refresher, let's look at the differences between series and parallel connection. So series connection of a battery is whereby you connect the positives to the negative. So if you taste, place two conventional AA pen light batteries, you place them next to each other, but with the plus and the minus the other way around, and you would connect the positive to the negative and uh, then make a small circuit out of this, then these two 1.5 volt batteries would create one system which produces three volts, right? So if you place the batteries in series, you increase the voltage but your amperage stays the same so that's series connection the opposite or the alternative is connecting them in parallel so with parallel connection you place the batteries next to each other with the positives and negatives kind of the same way and you would connect the positives together and the negatives together so that is parallel connection if you do it in this way the voltage would remain the same so for two pen lights you still have 1.5 volts but the amperage goes up. So series connection, voltage adds up, amperage stays the same. Parallel connection, voltage remains the same, amperage goes up. 
That's the difference between series and parallel. So now let's go back to our electrochemical cell where we're trying to create a higher capacity while keeping the voltage the same. So if we have a bigger vessel, we have more plates to increase the capacity. Now we connect all the, let's call them the, the positive plates. We connect them all together and connect them to the one terminal. And then all the negative plates, we, can, we wire them all together and connect them to the negative terminal. So now we have created an electrochemical cell which has a much higher capacity than the initial cell, uh, but the voltage is still the same. So now that you understand the basic operation principle of an electrochemical cell, now let's compare the two battery options, the two different chemistries of batteries, so the lead versus the lithium, because both, uh, both battery technologies are all based on electrochemical principle, right? So now you know the principle, and now we're going to look at what the actual difference is between the lead and the lithium batteries. So first of all, lead acid batteries is a general term and it includes many different kind of subtypes. So the flooded lead acid batteries, whereby the electrolyte is a liquid, are a type of lead acid batteries. The AGM, the absorbed glass matte batteries, are also lead-based batteries because the electrolyte with AGM batteries is absorbed in a glass mat and therefore you have a couple of advantages with AGMs. Uh, they're lower maintenance and you can typically place them in different orientations without the electrolyte to spill out because the electrolyte is held in place in the glass mat. There are also gel batteries which again are also lead acid batteries but hereby the electrolyte is held in place by a kind of a gel. So instead of the liquid electrolyte of the, uh, the flooded lead acid with the gel the electrolyte is held in place through a gel. Now officially the nominal voltage of one electrochemical cell with lead plates is 2.1 volts. So one cell is 2.1 volts. If you would now take two cells and combine them in series, you would get 4.2 volts. If you take three, it's 6.3 volts. And if you take six cells, you make the typical car or truck battery, which has a nominal voltage of 12.6 volts. Some people would uh, call this battery a 12 volt battery, some are 12.6, depends. The, the typical voltage of a battery lies somewhere between 12 to 14 volts, depending on the what you're doing, charging, discharging, etc. Now, since these batteries are made with lead, the batteries are really heavy. If you'd compare them with lithium batteries, they're six to eight times heavier, right? So that can be considered as a significant disadvantage. Uh, they're also relatively inexpensive by means of the upfront cost. So normally the price you pay for lead-based batteries is much lower compared to the lithium-based batteries on the long term. It depends, I'll get back to that later on, but by means of the initial price, lead batteries are much cheaper. A significant disadvantage of lead acid based batteries is that they do not allow a partial state of charge over a prolonged amount of time. It depends on which battery chemistry, it can be days or it can be weeks, but they do not like you to discharge the battery and then let it sit in this partially discharged state. If you would leave it for a prolonged amount of time, you cannot reverse the electrochemical reaction anymore, you can only partially do it. And by doing that, you are affecting different things, the lifetime of the battery, the capacity battery, etc. So in general, lead batteries don't really like a partial state of charge for a prolonged amount of time. So now let's compare the lithium batteries on the other side. So lithium, similar to lead, is a general term for a certain type of cells and batteries. So a couple of the terms that you might often come across are lithium ion. So Lithium ion batteries is still a very broad term uh, because ions are small particles, either way negatively or positively charged, which are part of the complete electrochemical reaction in a lithium battery. So both lithium batteries or lithium ion batteries are very general terms. If you see a lithium polymer battery or a LiPo battery, this is a very specific type of electrochemical lithium cell. Um, lithium polymer batteries are often the batteries which are used in handheld devices, uh, in your phones, in laptops, etc. And lithium polymer batteries have been around for a long time. A different kind of lithium 
base chemistry battery would be the lithium iron phosphate, the life PO4, uh, lithium ferrophosphate, they all refer to the same thing. So the official term is lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is a very specific type of lithium batteries uh, which have amazing technical characteristics. I love them. And you often see them on uh, large scale off grid solar energy systems. An important difference between the lithium batteries and the lead batteries is that their nominal voltage is different. It is substantially higher. So the nominal voltage of one lithium cell in general is 3.6 volts. That is only one cell. So now if you would combine multiple cells in series, two cells will give you 7.2 volts and four cells will give you 14.4. So this 14.4 volt is something which you might often come across with because the 14.4 is somewhat in the same range of the 12.6 of a lead acid based battery with six cells right and for this reason they can often be used interchangeably um, you sometimes have to double check whether your control equipment around the battery can facilitate a lead acid based battery to be exchanged with a lithium battery but typically the 12 volt nominal voltage lithium based batteries have um, a higher voltage than the lead acid based batteries. Now, the clear advantage of lithium batteries is that they're much lighter than lead acid based batteries and therefore they're often used in non stationary situations such as for RVs, campers, boats, bicycles, etc. So, this is an absolute advantage of lithium batteries. Um, the upfront costs are relatively high compared to lead and the long term depends. I'll get back to it later on as I promised you before. Uh, another great advantage of lithium batteries is that they do allow partial state of charge. So most lithium batteries allow you to discharge them and then let them sit for a while without, without it affecting the capacity or the overall lifetime of, of the battery. There is a limit to this, so double check the specifications or the manual of your manufacturer if you do purchase lithium batteries but in general they can withstand partial state of charge to a discharged state of the battery for much longer compared to lead batteries. So now that you understand what an electrochemical cell is, how it functions, uh, what the different types of batteries are and what the results are by means of voltage etc. Uh, let's go online and let's look at an example of batteries. I just want to show you something in real life that you can what you can expect when you start shopping. So I am going to a website of a battery manufacturer, US Battery. I'm not affiliated. Um, and I am going to their product section where I'm selecting the flooded lead acid chemistry. So we are looking here at lead acid based batteries and they're all flooded, right? So there's no AGM or gel batteries. These are just FLA batteries. Here we can see what I just explained about the different voltages. So the, the first one, is a battery that consists of one cell. There's only one cell inside. And therefore this battery has a nominal voltage of two volts. In real life, if you'll measure the voltage during normal operation, it will be somewhere between 1.8 and, and over three volts, right? But this battery is one cell and it has a nominal voltage of two volts. When we scroll down, we see the six volt batteries. And here you can clearly see that the six volt batteries consist of three cells inside. Right, because those the the white caps on the top are the filler caps where you can enter the 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 battery water or the electrolyte, the distilled water inside of the battery. So you see that the six volt batteries have all three cells and therefore three entry points, three filler caps. Now let's scroll down a little bit, and we can see that this battery manufacturer also has eight volt batteries, which is rather rare, but in certain situations can be really an advantage to have access to eight volt batteries. And you can see that these batteries have four caps, right? Hence, four times two is eight volt nominal per battery. So there's four cells in each battery. And then when we scroll down, we have the, the more standard conventional truck batteries, the 12 volts. And here you can see most of them, you can directly see the filler caps. So most of the time, it's two times three filler caps. So six filler caps, six cells inside times two is 12 volt nominal voltage. So that was just a practical example of um, what these different types of batteries are.
what I'm going to do for you in this chapter is make